योग कर्मसु कौशल नमस्ते मै सेल्फ शिव कुमार बेड़ी ऐम एन असोसियेट प्रोफेसर एट नाशनल इंस्टिट्यूट ऑफ फैशन टेक्नोलॉजी हईदराबाद निफ्ट हईदराबाद कैंपस ई वेलकम यू आल टू दिस सेशन ऑन मेन्टोरिंग एंड लाइफ स्किल डेवलपमेंट लेसन फ्रॉम इंडियन नॉलेज सिस्टम बिफोर ई बिगिन ई वुड लाइक टू थैंक Gujarat University's HRDC cell uh, and the director Professor Joshi sir of HRDC cell Professor Nilam Panchal uh, for giving me this wonderful opportunity to share my thoughts with you online. So uh, the topic that I have chosen for this small session of uh, probably sixty minutes uh, to to seventy uh, seventy five minutes. is about mentoring and life skills development lessons from indian knowledge system so what i have planned for this session is something like this first let us understand the context in which context we are about to begin our discussion on mentoring and life skill development and also we would like to see that can we take some important takeaways from indian knowledge system and why is it important to discuss about indian knowledge system probably i would like to use the word ikas in short so ikas meaning indian knowledge system then let us also understand mentoring and life skills i assume that most of us are from management education teachers in management education or uh, teachers in commerce so we all know what are the meanings of mentoring and life skills so but we will have a small uh, you know revisiting of these concepts of what is mentoring and what is life skill development because quite often we use these terms and also we practice in our in our day to day uh, you know profession then we have some lessons from indian knowledge system it's a very vast topic which is not uh, you know uh, i cannot uh, uh, cover everything in uh, in a small session and i'm not even expert in all the matters of uh, all the knowledge system of indian knowledge system but whatever best i could do whatever little i know i would like to share with you so let us discuss about the context there are many uh, teachers there are many faculty members in different disciplines there are faculty in science uh, faculty in humanities faculty in literature literature humanities or literature then faculties in commerce business management but we as a management teacher we have a, a very different role to play if you are a faculty in science for example if you are a faculty of physics or you you are a you are a professor of uh, chemistry or you are a professor of mathematics the life of a professor of these disciplines is more of a objective oriented objective meaning it's more of a discipline oriented and there is a rigid boundary a clearly defined boundary about their roles and responsibilities but when it comes to management teachers or management educators our boundaries are not so finely you know demarcated our boundaries are so flexible and that is we also wish to have that flexibility in our discipline because management education is a multidisciplinary it's an interdisciplinary we all know about it that is why our boundaries are all very you know fluid in nature we derive lessons from anthropology we derive lessons from psychology we derive lessons from commerce we derive lessons from economics we derive lessons from psychology we derive lessons from almost every branch of uh, knowledge even from physics even from mathematics yeah so because of that nature our role as a management teacher or a management educator is slightly different now what do we do there we teach we do research we also do consulting activities we also involve in lot of other activities that institution demands or sometimes we also you know uh, over joining over joiningly we will join those kind of an extra curricular activities depending upon our interest depending upon our time if you notice one thing apart from delivering what is 
prescribed in a curriculum or prescribed in a set of structure, academic structure, often we also involve in mentoring. Mentoring also involves something which is related to career and also something that is related to a few other values. Say, for example, how do you build a better leader? Uh, how do you make yourself a better leader? Leadership skills that we talk about. We also talk about negotiation skills. We talk about the communication skills. We talk about work ethics. We talk about stress management. We talk about work-life balance. So there are many such concepts that we come across. So that is a distinguishing factor or a distinguishing characteristic between a management educator and a non-management educator. This is one of the contexts in which we are going to discuss about mentoring, life skill development, and also seeing what can be learned from the uh, IKS, Indian Knowledge System. There is also another prime reason for taking up this topic. And the prime reason is because of the National Education Policy 2020. I have collected a few uh, you know, except a few points that are prescribed in the National Education Policy 2020. Look at this. It says NEP has a vision to move towards a more imaginative and a broad based liberal education as the foundation for holistic development of all students with rigorous specialization in chosen disciplines and fields. There are two important terms in this. One is holistic development of all students, which means we don't want them to be very specialization, merely a specialized specialist in a chosen field. Of course, we want them to be a rigorous, we want them to be an expert in their chosen discipline, but we also want them to be a holistic personality. We want them to be a holistic person. Often we have noticed people are very good in their own branch, their own discipline, but they fail to uh, you know, uh, you know, cope up with other aspects of their life and then let that lead to uh, not doing anything or doing very little to the society or very doing, uh, doing very little to the country or the nation building. That is why holistic important, holistic development is given a prime importance. And that is why we need to discuss something about those aspects of mentoring life skill development in the light of uh, Indian knowledge system. Another important point that we can notice in the NEP is academic, financial, and emotional support will be available for students to help them to attain better outcomes. So the word emotional support, which means the teacher's role is day by day becoming more and more demanding. It's not about uh, you know, doing your academic requirement and, uh, and, and then you can say that I have reached a sort of a logical terminal to my teaching or logical terminal to my, my, my profession, but there involves many other aspects, including emotional support. This is sort of a vision of NEP. It says the national education policy envisions an India-centered education system that contributes directly to transforming our nation sustainably into an equitable and vibrant knowledge society by providing high quality education to all. The most important keywords which you can notice is India-centered education system. Most of our education system, as we all know, it is derived from the McCollins education system, which has no connection with our culture, which has no connection with our indigenous requirement and that is why now it's a high time we should think about something called as india centered education system in the light of these things it's i find it appropriate to to offer or to 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 discuss uh, discuss something about indian knowledge system and how it can be used in mentoring and life skill development You must have noticed uh, there is a report which was published by World Health Organization and they call it as top 10 life skills. We'll discuss about those life skills later. What are those top 10 life skills? There is also an interesting concept which was uh, 
written sometime in uh, uh, 2010 by Henrich, then uh, Henny and uh, others. They have coined a new term called as weird. Weird is an acronym. What is the acronym? Weird is, W stands for Western. It's very interesting. I want you to pay attention to this word. Weird is, W stands for, weird has a different, uh, you know, literary meaning, liter literary meaning, but we're talking about the acronym that they have coined and what, the, what do they mean by this acronym? They say W stands for Western, E stands for educated, I stand for industrialized, R stand for rich, and D stands for democratic societies. Let's take, take an example of our own area. We do a lot of research. When we do a lot of research, either at the stage of PhD or post PhD, or as a, as a part of your academic deliverance, you engage in research. And what do you notice when you start your literature review? You notice that a lot of paper, almost 90 to 95 to 99 in most cases, you find papers, research papers that are published with a focus on these concepts, Western, maybe authors are Western, Westerners, or authors have discussed about some, something, keeping the Western countries in mind or Western countries as a focus of study. Of course, some of us, we actually do a lot of replica studies of that nature, but that's a replica study. That's not an original study. Then they talk about educated. Most of our research, especially when you talk about psychometric, when you talk about consumer surveys, when you talk about any other form of survey, we want people to be educated. If they're not educated, especially educate, education in English, most of the demography, will, they won't be part of our research. Then industrialized, which means very organized. Unorganized sector, it is difficult for us to do any research than rich countries and democratic countries or democratic societies. He also says, these authors also say that these weird and particularly American undergraduates are some of the most psychologically unusual people on earth, which means most of the research that, ha that, that has been published that is keeping these uh, you know, American undergraduates or American well, countries like America as a focus of study, and they have derived a lot of theories, a lot of concepts, you know, a lot of uh, publications that they have done. But the world is not just Western. World is from all the directions. World is all about, world is not only about Western. World is all about Eastern. World is also about uh, Southern. World is all about other, other, other zones. It's not always educated. There are people who are not educated. It's not always industrialized. There are people who work in a you know, non-industrialized sector, like handloom, handicraft, and all that. Then the rich, there are poor also, we know, and the poor number is higher. If you look at these, these, these concepts, Western, educated, industrialized, they do not constitute a reasonably good sample for our study. They constitute a very, uh, you know, very, uh, very negligible, and they, even you cannot call them as a sample so that it is not wise enough to generalize those concepts. This was an important, you know, uh, noteworthy, uh, uh, you know, uh, publication done by Henrich and others. Why am I using it? Because any guess, you can guess. What are we discussing? We are discussing about mentoring and life skill development. The moment we want to learn something, or the moment we would like to train ourselves in mentoring or in life skill development, what do we look at? We look up to the books, or we look up to the videos, or we look up to some of the training programs. Now, there is a high probability that you will stumble upon a book which is written, which is written by the Western, Western country as a focal point, or educated as a focal point, rich as a focal point, democratic society as a focal point. So which means there is high probability that even if you're talking about mentoring Indian graduates or Indian students, even if you would like to impart some skills, 
that would help them to improve their life skill life skills but we depend upon the western uh, publications and most of the best sellers that we got yeah i'm not going to name off those all those best sellers on the personality de development you know i think all of our uh, most of us if not all most of us our bookshelf have at least one book which is on pd pd means personality development and that is the best seller and that is published by you know so called western and you know rich and all that we have discussed how far they make complete sense do they really appeal to us of course some part of some part of those books may appeal some part may not appeal why they do not appeal to us most often least if i if i take an example you train people how do you present your presentations in an in a evaluation or in a jury or in a viva voice you know they read a ppt or they read a book present this way present that way it looks so mechanical it looks so artificial because a mere adoption from anywhere which is having no roots to your culture it always looks artificial say for example if there is if there is a if there is a beautiful uh, man gentle beautiful uh, woman a very beautiful actor actresses naturally she looks better if she does some sort of a makeup but what about if you do not have any you know if you are not so blessed or whatever for that reason then it looks artificial it looks mechanical because it has to have some connection with your core being some connection with your originality some connection with your roots so when we find such a gap then we must start think of start thinking about indian knowledge system it has a huge body of knowledge that can help you in many areas but today we are limiting our discussion to mentoring and life skill development but it can also help in many various various aspects of it. another point of the context that we're talking about is teachers of management discipline and their role as a mentors i think i have covered it in the beginning itself i don't want to repeat it again now then at the end we also see some lessons from the indian knowledge now let's let's uh, revisit the concept of mentoring i think most of us know it so let us not really spend much time on the meaning of mentoring as murray says mentoring is the process whereby a more experienced person helps a less experienced person develop in some speci specified capacity now is mentoring concept a new phenomenon i'm sure some of your institutions some of your colleges or some of your universities may have a system of mentoring in, in in the structure itself which means a faculty has to take four students under them and they have to mentor them you can say guideship it's a form of a mentoring only or there can be an arrangement where you have a set of senior students mentoring junior students or even in some cases you will have in you you may have you might have invited few business executives and you request them to mentor your students so there are different concepts of mentoring available but is mentoring a new concept is mentoring a new phenomena yes it is not at all a new phenomena it's one of the oldest phenomena you can see in indian uh you, you can see this mentoring concept prevailing in india prevailing in uh, europe prevailing in america prevailing in japan prevailing in any country you can also notice that mentoring is today is there today at present mentoring was there yesterday in the past so mentoring is not a new phenomenon for example now you can easily recognize the greatest mentor sri krishna lord sri krishna mentoring whom mentoring the distressed arjuna in the battlefield then another very famous of our own uh, india is chanakya who mentored chandragupta maurya 
we have also noticed we have also you know know about uh samarth ramadas mentoring shivaji maharaj of course shivaji maharaj also uh, had another mentor his mother jijabai was also a mentor to shivaji maharaj when it comes to spirituality we have swami vivekananda who was mentored by ramakrishna paramahamsa these are all few examples of our ancient india do we have some examples outside india yes of course you may find lot of examples if i take pagan cultures which is pre christian period a pre uh, you no know, pre christianity we have socrates then plato and aristotle so they were all a sort of in you know, a guru parampara guru shishya parampara that you can call so mentoring was there not only in india but also outside india this is all about the past what about the present in modern world in the in the today's modern business world very famous example that we keep hearing is about thomas edison mentoring henry ford both are great personalities henry ford i think we all know henry ford and uh, you know his black car and all that we know whenever we discuss about uh, marketing philosophies or philosophies of doing business we know production concept product concept and we we will not complete that class without mentioning henry ford and we also know about thomas edison the man who invented uh, you know electric bulb and uh, he has invented many things so thomas edison was mentoring henry ford and they were good friends also steve jobs mentoring mark zuckerberg warren buffett mentoring bill gates gopalakrishna gokhale mentoring mahatma gandhi and from the sports world sachin tendulkar mentoring pirendra shaiwa so what do we understand by this is that mentoring is not a new phenomena and it is all pervasive now mentoring in management education so how did it start of course management education has embraced almost all sorts of the best practices so for example if you talk about case method of teaching they have embraced uh, the system that happens in the law law schools of course harvard adopted it and most of us also follow in different very variety in different degree Now, if you look at mentoring and management education, the first and the foremost in mentoring that we find is in the school of education, MED, you can call it, school of education. There you find that mentoring is is appear is appearing to be the forefront in this discipline. I think you must be remembering when you were in schools when these uh, you know trainee teachers would come to take few classes. you know there the mentor sits in the same class and he evaluates the performance of a trainee teacher how is he, how he or she is performing as a teacher is he effective teacher or not then once they complete teaching they go back and they give constructive feedback for improving the teaching so this is where we can trace the roots of mentoring uh, in the in the education system so the schools of business have traditionally focused on the academic part rather than the professional preparation of the students which means business schools have adopted the educational models of liberal art faculties and not those of the professional faculties what do they mean by this if you notice this last three lines that i am talking about it has two distinct you know a uh, uh, part of uh, mentoring one talking about professional faculties the other one is liberal art faculty so what happens in liberal art faculty art meaning you are you are talking about uh, you know uh, painting and art in those fine art colleges say for example there is also a mentorship which is happening which is more specific to the job requirement which is more specific to the task at hand which is more specific to the profession that they are in so for example you are painting something or you are rendering something 
you are sketching something. There, you come across a problem. Maybe problem in terms of inspiration, problem in terms of uh, improving your rendering skills, problem in terms of coloring, problem in terms of many things. Then you will approach, or mentor would approach then and there itself, and he tries to solve those problems. He may not be interested in uh, giving you, uh, you know, uh, above, uh, over and above the requirement of the job. And then there is another set which is called as professional faculties, which talks about leadership skills. How do you behave uh, in a society? Uh, and then communication skills, negotiation skills, all that. But what exactly this line says that in management education, we have adopted job specific mentoring rather than the overall professional uh, mentoring. That's why we can see there are two types of uh, you know, mentoring thing. So differences in goals of mentoring relationship, as I mentioned, there are two types. One, value-oriented mentoring or social mentoring. So value-oriented, you know, uh, it can be, uh, for example, they have a dilemma, uh, uh, dilemma in uh, uh, switching the jobs, say for example or they have a dilemma in choosing which one to, they have two offers, two students have got two job offers, which one to choose, yeah. Then we have occupation oriented mentoring. For example, uh, they want to solve a case, uh, they want to solve a problem, they want to solve uh, a particular, you know, uh, you know, situation, then you would like to help them. That is occupation oriented mentoring. So in my opinion, and also in practice, we actually engage in both sorts of mentoring. The goals are different, but we engage oftenly, we engage both sorts of mentoring, whether it is institution, institutionalized mentoring or a non-institutionalized mentoring. Institutionalized mentoring meaning where institution has a structure where the faculty has to mentor students, whether they like it or not. In the non-institutional framework, mentoring is not mandatory, but students would come and approach. You know, there are few faculty members, uh, you know, behind whom uh, many students would go and they talk, they, they share their problems. It can be a professional problem, academic related problem, or sometimes personal problems, right? So, which means we do not have any, uh, you know, rigid line. We engage in almost all sorts of uh, mentoring. But remember the definition of mentoring, which talks about uh, one word, which is about more experienced mentoring, less experienced, which means you could come across a situation while mentoring that the situation has a different, you know, different, uh, you know, problem that you might have not, you might not have experienced at all. Then we should be very responsible. We should not engage in such mentoring because we do not have any experiences. Mentoring demands experience sharing. Mentoring demands experience. If you do not have experience, then, then I think it is not a right uh, to mentor. So for example, one student comes to you and uh, uh, she, has a, she has a problem of uh, you know, you teasing. You teasing is common. Uh, but some people handle it better way. Some people cannot take it. Some students cannot take it. And they're, they're seriously uh, unhappy about it. And they are very depressed. And they cannot think uh, about that. Situation. They cannot think beyond that. So then they approach you. But if you do not have any such experiences, and if you, if you do not even empathize, then you will end up a, a bad mentor to that student. I hope uh, uh, that makes uh, the point very clear to you. Let's proceed. Who can be the mentors in uh, management education? Faculty can be mentors. Staff can also be mentors. Most oftenly, before approaching faculty members, students would approach staff. You all know this fact. They go and talk to the staff and they understand what faculty says and uh, how do I go? I have not done my assignment. What should I do? Should I go now or should I go later? How is you know faculty's mood? Huh? If he's in good mood, he can go and he or she can go and get things done. Otherwise, they will all get this mentoring. I'm just saying an example, but 
they can also be good mentor for example uh, staff can also guide them on how to um, punctuality about punctuality about maintaining attendance and discipline staff can also be good mentors but you have to you know you have to raise to that occasion of mentorship if staffs they only come for uh, you know if they do not understand the requirement of an academic institution then they cannot be good mentors i think this is all uh, uh, very important for even staff members of an academic education institution academic institution to know that staff in education institution and staff in non education institution they are very totally different so uh, it, it it is an important uh, you know role that the staff also play in overall development of students then business executives you call business executives and they can they can also mentor i think i have discussed all that alumni is also an important source of uh, you know mentors uh, you can you can, now now that we have online facility and people are adjusting to the new normal of connecting online i think we can also engage alumni in uh, mentoring then we have senior students who are mentoring but there is a danger also they can also bring lot of damage to the overall academic deliverance but we need to be very careful we need to select students who are responsible otherwise uh, it can be very risky proposition yeah uh, then peers of course it happens without our knowledge sometimes they also mentor each other they also serve a good good guide a friend philosopher all that then you can think of uh, many such uh, you know mentors who can who can who can uh, build uh, uh, better personalities uh, uh, in the in the school in the college so what are the activities that we can do in mentoring we can give advice shadowing shadowing meaning they can uh, learn from just following someone for example uh, <coughs> sorry for example there is a very uh, bright student who has uh, who has uh, won several uh, awards in case writing or case uh, solving competitions so they can follow them and they can learn how 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 are they participating all that then interviews in the work environment you can also arrange a lunch and dinner depending upon the availability depending upon the you know feasibility you can think of arranging lunch and dinner networking field trips is also an important activity because there you you will know more than that because only in the classroom teaching uh if you do not you cannot uh, spend more time to understand a student as a whole you can only see what he is doing you can you can limit yourself there but if you are if you would like to know what are the true strengths and weaknesses and what is the true potential of a student you need to spend some time uh Uh, not not uh, not not always physically i am talking about i am i am just saying that you need to devote some time to understand many good teachers and faculty members without anybody's notice without even talking to them without even uh, having any engagement with them they only observe in silence and then they will help them to identify their own potential i think that is something which we need to really appreciate those activities housing with alumni staying with alumni basically help people in building their resume and portfolio mock interviews information about the discipline training program signs and conferences and other things so these are some uh, mentoring activities i think these are all uh, known to you i'm just revisiting these concepts before we go to the uh, main aspects of our discussion benefits of mentoring it helps to bridge the gap between academic training and the and the preparedness that you want your students to uh, inculcate when they are ready to enter the business world and mentoring programs also help students in areas such as goal setting self awareness and career management now let's also talk A little bit about uh, life skills. The term life skills refers to the skills you need to make the most out of life. There are few skills that you you have to have to make the best and the most out of life. Life skills are usually associated with managing and living a better quality of life. They help us to accomplish our ambitions. 
and live to our full potential so these are this is this is what we require to accomplish our ambitions and also to to live to our full potential what life skill life skills to life skills equipped students to thrive in the classroom and in the real world the world beyond the classroom that we're talking about so what who says about life skill world health organization says life skills are abilities for adaptive and positive behavior that enable individuals to deal effectively with the demands and challenges of everyday life it's a very late for who to actually identify this as an important skill to be healthy you know to to lead a healthy life both mental as well as physical uh, physical health so they say life skills are those skills actually they are the abilities abilities for what abilities for adaptive adaptive means how flexible you are to the changes that happen and positive behavior that enable individuals to deal effectively with the demands and challenges of everyday life i hope uh, there is no uh, problem in understanding the the definition given by the who so these are the 10 life skills top 10 core life skills which are recommended by world health organization let's see what are they number 1 problem solving second one critical thinking third one effective communication skills fourth one decision making fifth creative thinking next interpersonal relationship skills seven self awareness building skills eighth empathy ninth coping with stress and the last one coping with emotions so these are few uh, these are top 10 life skills that one must you know have to lead a better life to achieve the fullest potential of an individual yeah some of these things you already know like problem solving uh, decision making creative thinking empathy some of are like new to us for example self awareness is a very new uh, thing for us self awareness remember it's very important look at any knowledge system indian knowledge system or bharatiya jnana parampara for that matter we start with self awareness yeah self awareness is it is nothing but who are you what are your strengths what is your true potential what is your nature understand your body try to understand the nuances of mind buddhi manas no so bharatiya gyan parampara it focused upon self awareness as the most important concept and that every knowledge would start with that but we are little late and of course uh, we are now revisiting that and we are talking about all that but now it has become a mandatory for everyone to realize uh, you know self awareness and other aspects of it okay let's quickly see what what do they actually mean uh, all these 10 concepts uh, i will not go in detail because of the paucity of time but i will just revisit these concepts in very crisp and brief manner problem solving what is what, do, what does it mean it is a process of identifying identifying the problem and resolving those problems how do we do it problem solving involves breaking down that problem into smaller components then thinking about possible solutions once you have a set of possible solutions then you choose the best one yeah and this is an important uh, skill because it help us to solve our own problems and also the problems that we 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 come across in our workplace and also in the communities then critical thinking critical thinking is an important skill which is an ability to analyze the information 
and experiences in an objective manner. So that is also an important aspect. Third important skill is communication. I think this is more uh, you know discussed and uh, you know talked about it. Okay. Uh, Sometimes it is so talked that uh, uh, communication is the only skill that we need to have. Others can go to doldrums. Sometimes we have even presumed that way. You must you must have noticed in your schools and colleges that there are very smart smart I'm talking smart students who are not having any good conceptual clarity or conceptual skills, but they have very good communication skills. And most of them, they come from the convent education background. Their English communication is, is really super. But what they fail to understand is communication skills alone will not help. They require other skills also. They need to have a deeper understanding about their field of study. There is no compromise on that basic aspects of our learning. If you are a student of accountancy, you should be expert in accountancy. If you are a student of marketing, you should be an expert in marketing. If you are a student of data analytics, you should be expert in data analytics. If you are a student of uh, OR, operation research, should be expert in operation research. And in addition to that, you need to have all other skills which are also important. Okay. Next, decision making. I think we know it. Management education talks about decision making a lot. So we can go to the next one. Creative thinking. Uh, I have uh, uh, actually in the last uh, year, I guess, I have delivered a different uh, de delivered a separate talk on creative thinking skills. Uh, creativity in academics is the title of the of the discussion. You may please refer to that video, which is also made available by the UGC, uh, sorry, by the UGC HRTSL of Gujarat University on their YouTube channel. You can watch it. But what is creative thinking uh, in, in a very brief way? It is all about uh, thinking uh, novel ways, uh, thinking newness. It's about flexibility. It is about originality. It's about elaboration, building on other ideas. And it is an important skill. Then interpersonal relationship skills. Nothing but how do we relate in positive ways with others? How do we interact with them? Because we are all living in a society. We are all social animals. So how do I conduct myself with others? So those skills can be classified under interpersonal relationship skills. Then we have self-awareness skills. This is about recognition of the self, our character, our strengths, our weaknesses, our desires, our likes, our dislikes. It's an important skill that one must be aware of. Then empathy, it's the ability to imagine what life is like for another person. Yeah, everybody. I think we have, we have those who are from OB, OB background, organizational behavior. We talk all these concepts there. Then coping with stress. In all industrialized or organized working setup, stress has become, you know, uh, has become almost an integral part. Whether you designed it or whether sometimes people design stress, their, stress, their system of uh, you know, their organizational design is in such a way that stress is a byproduct. It comes, whether you like it or not, it comes. Even in the academia, you feel stress. Even in non-academia, whether you are in the production uh, shop floor, whether you are in accounting section or you are in the marketing section or you are in advertising section, there is a lot of stress. And uh, we also discuss about why we actually uh, uh, face stress and all that in subsequent slides. It's one of the important uh, you know, problem. And then, then we need to learn how to cope up. Coping is nothing but you cannot avoid. That's why we're talking about coping with that stress so that we can have a very balanced life. Then the last one is coping with emotions. It's the ability to control our emotions is something that we need to learn from, from a very engaged 
and it is something that we need to learn for the rest of our lives you know many this is also an important but we need to have emotions we are human beings we need to have emotions but it it should not be an emotion of arjuna who was in the battlefield battlefield so arjuna's emotions will not help arjuna's emotions during his battle time when he was in the kurukshetra war that was not the time for all these emotions yeah but can you can you can you actually achieve do you really make people that they should be emotionless that is not possible and that is also not desirable you cannot have any relationship if there is no emotion you cannot enjoy anything say for example you cannot enjoy a good movie if you do not have emotions you cannot enjoy a beauty you cannot enjoy a flower you cannot enjoy any aspect of our life if you are not having emotions but at the same time there should be some regulation to the emotions yeah so for example you watch a movie and in a movie uh, it's a it's a tragedy that you know uh, at the end both the uh, hero and heroine they 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 actually met with an unfortunate incident and they 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 end their life now you carry huge emotion because you attach to that movie do you really carry it throughout your life no we do not carry it throughout our life it 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 may stay with you for one day or two day or maybe for few days but if it starts haunting you if it start and if it says it is not leaving you that emotion then there is some problem with us i think majority of us will will know that it's it's a movie and uh, that's not real life and it can happen with anyone but we do not really become so attached to it we will attach will enjoy otherwise for example if you are not emotion if you are not having any emotion during the movie also you do not enjoy the movie because you don't find anything happening there because hero heroine unfortunate incident they end their life you don't you don't feel anything there that is also not good but there is another extreme that you watch the movie you are so involved you cry in the movie hall cinema hall you come out again you cry once again you explain the story again there also you cry and you are alone now then also you cry and the crying is not ending only that is also not so good so that is why we need to learn these skills of regulating the emotions coping with the emotions rather now we are discussing about iks indian knowledge system i think this is a phrase that uh, uh, that covers practically everything about india everything about bharat the word india here is not uh, the geographical or a political india that we see today whenever we refer to india here we are referring to the akhand bharat akhand bharat means it, it the not today's india we are talking about the greater bharat probably which is from uh, uh iran from the west to the uh japan in the east and there are three words here iks indian knowledge system so what is indian indian here means indigenous sources of knowledge indigenous matlab which are our own sources of knowledge that are generated by the akhand bharat okay. then there is another word called knowledge i think we all know about knowledge meaning gyan so there are two such sorts of uh, knowledge we know explicit knowledge and implicit knowledge implicit can be tacit knowledge tacit knowledge that arises in the form of the wisdom of the knowledge seeker say for example you are setting up question paper and you know certain concepts of marketing there are two faculty members both of them have done extremely well in their area which is marketing but both of them set different set of questions question papers 
because the wisdom is arising from the knowledge seeker though the knowledge which is marketing as a explicit knowledge was taught to both of them but their question setting is totally different this can be treated as a wisdom some of them can set you know very tricky questions if it is objective type of questions if it's like mcqs you will really know the difference between the understanding of both the faculty members no most oftenly i i i actually see that the the real talent of a of a teacher or a professor comes to light more clearly when they set mcq mcqs when they set objective type of questions it happens in uh, these uh, you know ugc uh, net exams or state level uh, set exams and all that most oftenly they said you see find very good question sometimes you you would like to appreciate that paper setter yeah bahut hi you know soch samajh ke ek question unhone dala hai and sometimes you feel that no this guy has very limited understanding about that concept so what is my point here the my point is tacit knowledge is something that is actually coming from the wisdom of the knowledge seeker such knowledge is actually obtained by the insights insights matlab jo aap grahan karte ho usse jo aap meaning banate ho ha ah, insights and they are gained by personal experiences with life situations facing problems coming up with means of solving them it's easy to record explicit knowledge easier in a way but it is difficult to record tacit knowledge at other times there is also certain knowledge that we are, that we get by means of intense observation experimentation conjecturing and analysis so when we notice all these sets of knowledge what we can notice is knowledge may or may not be converted into literary format then what do we do we use oral tradition oral tradition meaning main aapko batata hu aur usse aap kisi aur ko batate ho aise hi wo ek parampara chalta hai that is called as oral tradition if today we learn important moral lessons and values from ramayana mahabharata puranas they are actually preserved in oral tradition there were no means of uh, recording uh, there are there were no means of uh, you know keeping in sort of a writing uh, there were no such instruments but today we have different copies of it but primarily it was kept alive because of the oral tradition many people may object if it is written then only i understand it it is true today you have lot of you know equipments and all uh, you know tools and techniques to preserve record the knowledge but those days it was not possible that is why there were oral tradition at the same time there were few tacit knowledge which you cannot sum up in sort of a you know writing you can share your experiences but it does not guarantee you that those experiences help you in all the situations that you come across which were similar to the one who taught you those experiences or who shared you those experiences because your ex your ex situations may not be exactly same even if they are exactly same you cannot apply as it is because you have to add something of your own or sometimes you you have to remove something out of it that is why it is a true original form of knowledge true true not true not in the true false sense but i'm saying it is it is your own wisdom that i'm talking about yeah so here knowledge means the wisdom which which has been transformed from Uh, you know ages centuries then there is another word called as system system is is a structured methodology and a classification scheme to 
access the available body of knowledge. If there is no system, it is difficult to access that body of body of knowledge. Simple example, say for example, you would like to do a research in, uh, let's say for example, online trust, online trust or uh, customer satisfaction or any other such, you know, highly uh, rated, overrated topics that we have. Yeah, customer satisfaction, loyalty and all that. There is so much body of knowledge available already on these topics. But how do you access that available body of knowledge? You will have a structure. Maybe a structure which depends upon the chronology. Chronology meaning year-wise. Or maybe a structure that you would like to devise depending upon the highest cited, highest cited paper. Or a structure that you would like to employ you know, on the top rated journals and the, the articles that have appeared on those top rated journals. So basically, system is a structured approach. It's a methodology that helps us to classify the scheme and then we can access that knowledge, the available body of knowledge. So here is an attempt to classify Indian knowledge system. It's a really good attempt, which was uh, which I found uh, in this book called as Introduction to Indian Knowledge System: Concepts and Applications by Mahadevan B and Bhat Vihar. Some of you may be knowing Mahadevan B. He's a professor at IIM Bangalore, uh, so he has co-authored this book. It's real. It's a decent classification. We can we can uh, we can use it for this class. I have also given the references. Uh, here you can you can refer it later. No, now IKS has uh, if this classification. Why do we require classification? Because to make uh, accessible the knowledge accessible to us. Otherwise, it's a huge corpus of knowledge, the huge body of knowledge which we have in Indian Indian knowledge system. IKS stands for Indian knowledge system. Now. Let us classify them in two categories. One literary, the other one is non-literary, literary and non-literary. Yeah. In the literary, again, we have Sanatana Dharma, other dharmic traditions, and regional. So, what do we have in Sanatana Dharma? We have core aspects of it. Say, for example, 14 Vidyasthanas and works of several religious leaders and philosophers like Shankaracharya, Madhvacharya, Ramanujacharya, many such philosophers have given certain knowledge. Then there are other aspects of Sanatra Dharma which are basic and applied sciences, engineering marvels that we find in Sanatra Dharma or Indian knowledge system, architecture, alchemy, aesthetics, kavyas, arts, health, wellness, psychology, public administration, code of living, etc. Then we have other dharmic traditions, which are other darshanas like Buddhists and Jain, which are also rooted in the same Sanatana Dharma. Then apart from these two, we also have regional uh, contributions into the Indian knowledge system, which are also wealth of religious and other literature in all major Indian languages. Then we have law literary, which are in oral traditions like art forms, health, food and life, practices and folklore. Now for this context, the context of mentoring and the context of life skill development, we would like to see few, we can, we can rely upon many aspects of it. Say for example, uh, in, the, in this branch or in this classification, I can learn something about health, wellness, psychology. Yeah, because health, wellness, psychology, they would help us in mentoring. They would help us in, um, what do we say, in life skill development. Or if you are actually uh, have the skill and wisdom to connect to the mentoring and uh, life skill development, then anything can apply. Say, for example, 40 Vidyasthana can also apply. 
works of several religious leaders and philosophers can apply. Art forms can also apply. So for example, a student is in, in depression. Then if they know some art form that can help them to get rid of the depression. Today, most of our students do not actually have any interest in the art forms. Most of them or some of them, they do not have interest in the art form. And that is why, how do you, how do you actually have a, you know, you know, joyful life if you do not have any interest in art, if you do not have any interest in aesthetics, kavyas, arts, isn't it? So you can, you can take any stream, you can take any thread from the Indian knowledge system that directly or indirectly help you in mentoring and help you in life skill, life skills development. Isn't it? Now, once you look at these aspects and just for a curiosity, if you start comparing with so-called uh, bestsellers on coping with the stress, uh, then uh, many things are there, right? How do you become this? How do you become that in 30 days, 60 days? All shortcuts and you know, ready reconnors that are available. You they they actually start looking uh, not so appealing to you, not so meaningful to you because you find more relevant and more uh, you know uh, appealing to you. Uh, uh, and these things are there in the Indian knowledge system. My idea here is to provide a better alternative to that body of knowledge that you utilize in training, in development, or mentoring, or in skill, life skill development. But one caution, the caution is you must really go in depth and then uh, you know, adopt. You must actually spend long hours of reading from the authentic sources because there is a danger in this. In, in IKS, there is a danger. The danger is often we come across those words which are not authentic. Often we get to hear from people who are not you know, authentic people. So that's why we need to be very clear. Before we talk about this, we need to be very clear. Otherwise, let us, let us not even touch upon such subjects. So with all this caution and, and guard, I'm not really going in detail, but I would like to just give a glimpse of it. Even I'm not an expert in all this matter. I, and I admit that, but whatever little I know, little or whatever very negligible thing I know, I would like to give a sort of entry and then onwards we can develop together. Uh, uh, and uh, if we are fortunate enough, we meet the right kind of uh, gurus and right kind of, uh, you know, uh, mentors, right kind of a book, right kind of uh, literature that is authentic uh, literature, authentic gurus we will meet. There was a word called uh, 14 Vidyasthanas. Let us know what are those 14 Vidyasthanas. It consists of these three things. One, Vedas, as all of us know, there are four Vedas. Rugveda, Ejurveda, Samaveda, Atharva Veda. Then to understand and make a very good interpretations of Vedas, we must know something called as Vedangas. What are Vedangas? There are six Vedangas. These are Vedangas. Vedanga, which are required to know Vedas or interpret Vedas in a very true form, in a correct form. What are they? Shiksha, Vakarana, Nirukta, Chandas, Jyotisha, Kalpa. We are not going in detail. Shiksha is phonetic. How do you pronounce? Vakarana is the grammar. Nirukta is etymology of the word, how the word comes. Yeah, Chandas is the meter. Chandas is, uh, those who know a little bit of literature, they know Chandas. Yeah, Chandas is the meter. When you compose a poem, 
you follow certain uh, rules because when you follow those rules of meter when you follow the rules of those chandas it looks beautiful jyotisha and kalpa you know that right then we have puranas and dharma shastras and smriti manu smriti yagnevalkya smriti so these smritis you know so these are two smritis sorry two uh, other aspects puranas and itihasas so we have puranas and then itihasas dharma shastra and smriti then we have nyaya vaisheshika yoga sankhya this then we have purva mimamsa and uttara mimamsa they are called as darshanas philosophies nyaya vaisheshika yoga samkhya purva mimamsa uttara mimamsa and darshan now if you see all of that for example this 4 6 10 11 12 13 14 so these are called as 14 vidyasthanas 14 vidyasthanas so one can derive lot of insights from these aspects yeah we may not be able to understand vedas because we do not have requisite uh, you know training but we can start with itihasas itihasa like ramayana mahabharata we can start with that or bhagavad gita for that matter we can start with that now from that body of knowledge that i have discussed let us take a few concepts from iks that would help us in mentoring and life skill development so what i have planned i would like to discuss something about dharma swadharma purusharthas and subhashitas and i am repeating it again and again that this is this is kind of an entry to the body of iks to the body of indian knowledge system where all i can get uh, you know insights yeah but it is an entry it is not everything it's just an entry it is just a glimpse it it, it, it is just an you know a small uh, you know window through which we can see what is all there in the iks even not a window just a small you know uh, pin hole through which the small hole with through which i can see what what is there in the indian knowledge system yeah first thing dharma and uh, this is a word which is uh, often mistaken and we use religion as a synonym to dharma which is not which is not correct which means the english translation of dharma is not religion and you do not find uh, uh, any uh, you know word for dharma in english or maybe in other languages also you, you may not find a synonym for the word dharma in sanskrit every word in sanskrit every word has etymology most of the words for that matter they have etymology etymology meaning nishpatti nishpatti meaning how did that word come or how did that word form yeah i want you to please pay attention to this concept because it's little important and it's also a foundation fundamental to our understanding of indian knowledge system let me take an example of uh, mm, t pi t pi what do you mean by t pi t pi it's a small table on which you keep tea yeah just for a curiosity if you really it can be true or it can be false but i'm just giving an example why is it called as a tea pie maybe it has maybe because we keep tea on it or maybe sometimes it has only three legs a small tea pie maybe it has only three legs and that is why it is tea pie we also have something called chopai you know dohas most of the dohas are in chopai because they are in that order like four lines or something like that so what do you understand by this is that every word has sort of etymology most of the languages they do not have such such you know 
thoughtful naming for example why do you call apple an apple it's a label to that particular fruit it's a label assigned to that particular fruit fruit but in sanskrit it is not like that for every word there is a etymology behind it so if you would like to know the meaning of dharma you need to know the the etymology of the word dharma so it is from the word dhatu called dhru which means dharanat dharma ityaho what is what do you mean by dharana dharma is something which sustains life which maintains life sustains life meaning it's a sort of an arrangement between you and other aspects of your life other aspects of your community other aspects of your surrounding and that sustains life and sustains everything around you so dharana dharma itya which means religion is not the synonym for dharma that is the first thing that we notice and it also there is also a famous saying that we all know dharmo rakshati rakshita which means if you follow dharma or if you protect dharma dharma will protect you which means there are few fundamental principles if you do those things if you follow that you will be taken care of or you will be you will be you will you will be protected by the dharma dharma that has been kept alive protects its followers so in practice we use the word word dharma in different connotations okay so what are they one we have naija dharma naija naija means nija nija means true nature then we have nyaya justice nyaya dharma once natural expression shall not harm natural form of another this gives a sense of limit okay what do you mean by that let's talk about naija dharma for example what is the naija dharma of fire the naija dharma of fire is to burn that's its nature that's the naija dharma what is the naija dharma of water is to wet something right so this is the naija dharma it's a it's a it's a nature it's in the nature yeah then nyaya for example naija dharma the nyaya says nyaya dharma says your natural expression should not harm other natural form for example we see many people today they talk about something because they think uh, it is my nature i can write anything but it should not harm others it should not harm other sentiments so this nyaya tells about the sense of limit that brings an order that brings an justice that brings justice then maitri maitri means love and so that maitri is something that is beneficial to others including living and non living entities it's very important for us to notice that it's only the indian civilization or bharatiya gyan parampara that gives due importance to both living and non living entities for example we never consider river as a non living entity for us river has the life yeah for us rocks also have certain life most of the rocks we worship mountains have life for us we worship mountains also so what does it indicate it indicates maitri the love respect to both living and non living entities yeah so now when you look at these aspects how do how do we connect to our students how do we actually use them in mentoring now when we talk about maitri and all that 
we are actually broadening the souls of the individual we are actually preparing them for 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 a for a better life or a quality life for example if they know very well about the nyaya dharma they will never hurt others if they know about maitri maitri dharma they will always try to be beneficial to others including living and non living in the corporate world when our graduates graduate as a managers and they join a company they start treating everything for example those become managers in mining those people become managers in many other aspects of uh, businesses sometimes they even exploit living people and that is that is why we have uh, come across many uh, uh, you know uh, hard uh, bitter incidents in the factories uh, in the shop floor uh, in most of the cases so this is important for us to for us to know the importance of dharma this is nothing to do with the religion that we are talking about this is to do with the the way of life then then we let us talk about types of dharma so dharma means there are there are four types of dharma one is nitya dharma which is called as generic dharma samanya dharma which is applicable to all whether you are indian european american southern south indian north indian or whether you are a male or a female whether you are rich or poor whether you are a you know boy or girl it is applicable to all irrespective of desha kala irrespective of time and space that is called as nitya dharma that the first one then we have vishesha dharma vishesha special dharma by virtue of your ashrama we will discuss about vishesha dharma naimittika then apad dharma okay so what is uh, uh, the first one nitya dharma okay or generic dharma nitya dharma nitya or generic time of i can Uh, then call us i will call i will call sorry nitya or generic dharma nitya means nitya i think uh, all of us can and nitya means ever, evergreen it's applicable to all irrespective of time and space irrespective of varnas varna again there is a slight confusion among all of us uh, uh, one is varna so what what are the different varnas we have uh, chatur varna four varnas are there a brahmana kshatriya vaishya and shudra but remember they are not by janma if you are born to a brahmana you are not brahmana if you are born to kshatriya it is not necessary that you will be kshatriya this is the choice that you can make depending upon your ability skill and quality it's a characteristic varna is more a characteristic it is not a caste it's not a caste it is a varna is a characteristic it 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 shows the quality some of us are very good in you know fighting for the cause fighting for the motherland kshatriya dharma some of us are very good in trading it's a vaishya vaishya varna there is also an important line that is that we should know that uh, janmana jayate shudraha samskara bhave dvijaha so it says janmana jayate shudra by birth all of us are shudra then samskara bhave dvijaha if you would like to it is only through samskara it is only through training it is only through those samskara you attain different other qualities or different other varnas which means varnas are not caste so why am i why am i clarifying this because this nitya or a generic dharma that we are talking about is applicable to everyone whether you are a soldier whether you are a faculty member whether you are a husband whether you are a wife 
whether you are a sports person whether you are a cinema actor whether you are a small 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 you uh, know uh, office bearer in an office it's applicable to all applicable to all race applicable to all ethnicity it's something something which is very general to everyone anybody i think everyone should follow that what are they manusmriti says about 10 qualities of such dharma what are they it is written here so what are we discussing we are discussing that there is something called as generic dharma which is applicable to all which all must follow and it is and it, everybody would agree upon it there is no second thought in it if you would like to lead a happy life and you are leading happy life will not disturb others happiness then one must follow this generic dharma what are they there are 10 lakshana there are 10 qualities to follow generic dharma one is dhruti kshama damo astheyam shaucham indriya nigraha dhirvidya satyam akrodho dashakam dharma lakshana dasha is 10 dharma lakshana 10 uh characteristics of dharma samanya dharma or generic dharma what is dhruti dhruti kshama damo you can say this is one dhruti kshama two damo three four shaucham five indriya nigraha six seven eight satyam nine then akrodho 10 these are dashaka dharma lakshana so what are what is dhriti what is kshama what is dama what is astheya what is shaucham we will see in the next slide so look at here i have just taken it from a book called faith for life by dv gundappa dvg is a very uh, great exemplary and the scholar uh, he was faith for he wrote a book called faith for life he has written many books uh, and uh, he is one of the uh, uh, finest uh, scholar and uh, rishi you can call so what he and he is explaining us what is uh, what is uh, uh, those 10 important features of dharma uh, which is a generic dharma everyone everyone can follow it dhruti means patience whether you are a boy or girl whether you are indian or american one should have patience kshama forgiveness we, we people talk about forgiveness forgive and forget and move ahead all that we talk about these are all explained by manu manusmriti then dama self control yeah and uh, it is important concept astheya not stealing astheya means not interested in others property not stealing should we not follow this irrespective of what what uh, belief you follow irrespective of what gender you are irrespective of what profession you are in should we not follow astheya not stealing shaucha purity not only the purity of the body but also the purity of the mind then indriya nigraha sense control our five senses they would like to see the eyes would like to see whatever it wishes to see uh, all that it is you know uh, and then uh, uh, our uh, uh, jiva the tongue wants to eat uh, whatever it wishes to eat we should have indriya nigraha otherwise we will we'll get into trouble the is the intellect the is the intellect intelligence yeah vidya as we know learning and knowledge satya truth akrodha absence of anger so it says the this is all about what dharma samanya dharma or generic dharma which all must follow and every if you want to lead a happy life and you want let others to lead a happy life then we we should be following these things it doesn't it doesn't uh, you know it, it there is no such uh, you know whether you are uh, 
Indian born or a non-Indian uh, resident, anyone can follow. And if you do not follow, we'll get into trouble. Say, for example, we do not practice Kshama. Then what happens? You, you will get into stress and a uh, lot of negativity that starts piling up. You will not perform your job better. You will not perform your other activities better. So there is a miserable thing which is going to happen. Shaucha purity. If you do not keep your body uh, clean, if you do not keep your mind clean, you know what is going to happen. Learning and knowledge, Vidya. Take anything from this list of 10. It, it's important for anybody. So this we can we can we can actually use this body of knowledge, which is there in the Indian knowledge system, to teach our uh, uh, to mentor our, our students. And these are going to be with them for lifelong because it has their own connection because they are culturally so easy to connect. Because we all talk, we, we all talk about dharma in day-to-day -day life. Okay. Yeah. So after this dharma, which is uh, the first part, which is, uh, which is, which is the generic dharma or uh, samanya dharma, we'll now go to the next one which is Vishesha Dharma, special. This is, this you perform because by the virtue of your ashrama, ashrama meaning if you are a Brahmacharya ashrama, there are few things that you will perform. If you are in uh, Grihastha ashrama, you will take care of your wife or your husband, you will take care of your children, you will work, you will do certain activities. You must do there because the ashrama demands for you to do that. If you're in one prastha ashrama, there is some, some other thing that you have to do. If you're in sannyas ashrama, you'll do something. I think I'm not discussing about ashramas. There are four ashramas, brahmacharya, grahastha, vanaprastha, and sannyas ashrama. We all know that. So there are certain uh, you know, uh, practices that we will follow, and, and that is because of our ashrama. If you do know, for example, if a Brahmacharya Ashrama, Brahmacharya, for example, those who involve in learning, uh, you know, uh, or, or those who involve in uh, gaining knowledge, most of our students, ideally, they should be falling in the category of Brahmacharya. But today, you also may notice students who are married, which means they have to fulfill the requirements of both the Ashrama, both Grihastha Ashrama as well as Brahmacharya Ashrama. So in that case, they have to they have to perform both. Let's suppose if somebody is in Brahmacharya Ashrama, which means he has to uh, uh, he has to learn knowledge, he has to spend his time, energy, all that. But if he starts neglecting that and he starts behaving like a Grihastha Ashrama, then he will never able to complete his education. Yes, this is called as Vishesha Dharma. Then we have Naimitika Dharma, Naimitika, which is for a particular reason, for a particular purpose, we'll do it. Say, for example, uh, uh, say, for example, uh, uh, somebody takes uh, a Vrata for 45 days or 90 days, it, you will do this, you will do that. That is with a purpose you do. You will not do it all the time, but you will do it for one day or two days. Like for example, uh, in, in our academic setup, you can consider something like this. You would like to make, uh, uh, you would like to arrange a small conference and you will cancel all the classes and you work for that particular purpose. For that nimitta, for that particular cause, you work for a few days or you work for a couple of, uh, for, for a week or so. That's a nimitta. We will not do it all the time. Yeah. If you, are, if you do it all the time, then, then that's not uh, desirable. Okay. So we need to be very clear about these things. Then the last one is also important, which is called as apad dharma. Apat, apato, apad dharma means there can be a situation where you cannot follow those aspects of dharma. Like you cannot follow the earlier three. You cannot follow those dasha, uh, like 10 things that we, you may not follow. For example, you are sick. You may not able to earn, you may not able to learn, uh, you may not able to do whatever is prescribed by that ashrama. Then what do you do? You, then you, in that case, 
uh, you will do something to at least protect the core aspects of dharma. When above can't be practiced because of some reason, then we'll apply upper dharma. Say, for example, uh, there is a word called, in, when you look at, uh, say, for example, if you look at this, there is something called as satya, truth. But there can be upper dharma where by speaking truth, you will do more danger to others. So for example, you know those stories, right? Uh, there is a there is a um, hunter who is uh, not hunter. Maybe there is a there is a uh, thief who is uh, chasing a wealthy person in the forest, and the wealthy pers person just goes and hides in some direction. Then the thief comes and thief meets uh, a rishi, and he will ask rishi. That Rishi has actually seen where this wealthy person is hiding. The Rishi will not tell the truth. He says, I do not know, or, uh, but he says a different direction and the thief goes there. Which means the Rishi has not uh, spoken the truth there. But that is permitted because that's the upper dharma. He is following the upper dharma. Okay. So these are all aspects of dharma. So we have understood that. So when we use these aspects, it would it, be very, very useful for, uh, it can be useful for in mentoring and other aspects. Then another concept that uh, we will discuss now is about Swadharma. It's very important. This has its roots in Karma Yoga, Bhagavad Gita. And Bhagavad Gita is one of the best system, one of the best source of knowledge that would be uh, that would be a great mentor, that would be used as a text for mentoring, for all sorts of life skill development. There is no other, you know, uh, because that is why everybody follows uh, in India and outside India also. Swadharma. So what is Swadharma? Very important. Following one's own dharma. Here dharma means, it's a different connotation here. So dharma means, there are few things that we do. Please, please observe this. Because this concept of Swadharma helps students to get clarity in what they want to do. It also helps students to have a clarity in their vision, have a clarity in their life goals. It's very important. That's why I, I please pay attention to this word called as Swadharma. Swadharma meaning any act or any work that you can do it easily, doing with ease, doing with lot of ease. Yeah, doing with lot of ease. Say, for example, you are by, by nature, you are very good in mathematics. And logically, you will be also very good in statistics. And hence, you will also be maybe very good in data analytics, very good in machine learning, very good in artificial intelligence, very good in um, you know softwares like Python, R, because you find these things easy to do. You have some sort of a you know inbuilt skill or a passion for those subjects, and hence you will do it with lot of ease. But there can be a set of others. For them, mathematics is like a, uh, it's a, it's a very difficult subject. They cannot even uh, like to see the numbers, but they love words. For them, qualitative research is an important aspect of them. They love recording the interviews. They love transcribing them. They love reading it again and again. They love making uh, coding to them. They love, uh, you know, uh, uh, exploring themes in those uh, transcriptions. And then they love reading, writing, and they will do it a lot of ease. But the person who is very good in math, the person who is very good with numbers, maybe he's also good in words, but I'm just giving an example. But for a person who is very good in number, he may not be so comfortable with words. Even if you force them to do a task, which means a person who is good with number, 
forcing him to do something with words and vice versa where which is the person who is very good with words forcing him to do something with the number they can also do by training but they will feel lot of uneasiness they will not find it very happy to do that they will feel lot of stress because it is not matching with their passion it is not matching with their swadharma do you understand the word swadharma here now swadharma is nothing but your passion the skills training and occupation when all of them they match then then we are actually doing something called as swadharma so when when we know what is my swadharma for example you are good in singing you can be a very good singer but looking at somebody who is singing because singers for example singers get lot of recognition they get lot of awards they get they become public figure uh, in a very short span of time if you are a good singer reasonably good singer then maybe in, a, in maybe others can also get inspired to become like a singer they try they go for singing classes they do lot of uh, talim and uh, riyaz all that they do uh, they do lot of abhyas and all that but they will they will do it lot of difficulty even if they for example if they, if they do a competition both of them may do very well but one do one will do it lot of ease other will do it lot of difficulty it happens with us also for example you take a class uh, and a class which is your favorite subject you will do it lot of ease look at uh, you on that day where you are teaching your favorite subject or a favorite concept how do you go to the class we all go to that class with lot of happiness with lot of ease you know uh, we were very happy we were happy before going to the class we are happy during the class we are happy even after the class because this is our swadharma sometimes we are also forced to take subjects which we do not like but we have been trained in that subject how do we go our our pain points or our pain starts even at least two or three days before only oh day after tomorrow 10 am i have a class tomorrow i have a class today i have a class after one hour i have a class my class is there now how do i do what do i do i have prepared everything i am doing reasonably good no doubt in that students are learning but i feel lot of stress within why do i feel lot of stress because i am not following my swadharma so this is very important concept for all of us if you want to have a life if our students want to lead a life with no stress and enjoy only happiness while work or while any aspects of our life we need to follow our passion that has to match with our skill it is also important sometimes we have a passion but we do not have necessary skills that's not swadharma all these are important passion skills let let me underline this otherwise we'll get caught passion alone does not qualify for the swadharma i am passionate about uh, photography but i do not know a b c d of dslr camera i do not know what is aperture i do not know what is shutter speed i do not know anything about camera but i have a passion to become a wildlife photographer but i do not but i will i will run away when i see a simple you know a cockroach in my family in my home at my home so which means i do not have necessary skills i have passion say for example i have passion i have skills then i should also have a continuous training upgradation in that and then i should also choose an occupation which should match yeah this is an important aspect one more thing we need to understand that it doesn't happen in one day for example today you teach swadharma uh, and then teach about passion skills training and all that it doesn't happen that overnight it's it's an evolutionary a very slow evolutionary process in my opinion or in my in my view it doesn't happen that in one day you you will find your swadharma and you will do it can be trial and error it can be it can be like you try this and you try that it takes some time but 
earlier you find your sadharma it is always good one or the other day we have to find our sadharma whether you find it in 25 years age or you find it in 50 years of age or you find it in 80 years of age if you would like to if, if somebody would like to enjoy the work it has to match with our passion it has to match with our skills it has to match with our training it has to match with our occupation this is not my word this is all i have learned from uh, the teachers and the gurus which 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 they have actually taught me they are not my own words huh? even the explanation also is not mine if there is anything that has to be credited is to them if there is anything that that is to be discounted it's because of my uh, misinterpretation of those concepts it's because of my poor understanding of those concepts if there is any mistake that i am doing it is because of my poor understanding not because of the teachers who taught me yeah next there is also an important line which is about swadharme nidhanam shreya this line i am talking about swadharme nidhanam shreya this is a sentence this is a shloka that we find in karma yoga krishna says this 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 line to arjuna because arjuna says no i don't want to fight but arjuna swadharma is to fight he is a kshatriya he is a warrior so he says better you perform this duty better you follow this even if you die even if you do not win over if you do not win it will be really great to die while following the swadharma that is why swadharme nidhanam shreya shreya means it is even better to you know uh, lose or you know better to lose while performing uh, when practicing swadharma which means even if you follow passion skills training occupation everything is there sometimes you may not succeed but that but that failure is also a, also a great thing because that failure is really great because in the process of following swadharma you have actually mastered lot of skills you have actually mastered lot of techniques you have actually mastered and improvised your strengths that is why it's there is no waste even if you do not succeed by following swadharma there is no wastage at all so now why there is no stress in following one's swadharma there are few reasons for it when we follow swadharma prakriti helps you because it's so aligned with your nature it's easy for you to do you you have a very god gifted uh, you know voice and also in your family there are people who sing well there is also uh, you know school where they encourage you singing it's easy for you to follow that because prakriti helps you there works gets completed in easier and faster mode we have discussed about it faster also it will happen the more importantly when you do something by following your own swadharma that can bring benefit to the society in a very good magnitude then doing other works for example you are a good teacher in uh, you know um, physics or good teacher in um, quantitative if you follow that you can do better by 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 and you cannot do such a better thing if you follow teaching uh, qualitative techniques of research yeah so this is also an important uh, reason that we will not have any stress and most importantly another important aspect by following swadharma one strengths continuously evolve that is why even if you you know it is the, that is why it is very shreyas if it is it is good because if a strengths continuously evolve they will they will become better and better you can apply it to your swart and work life balance well being there are many such concepts we discuss like swart and other things the strength opportunities weakness all that we know so this this can also be like looked into uh, you know this can also be not exactly i do not recommend we re- really we need to have some sort of a you know uh, uh, analogous concepts in these things but just to make uh, easier for us to understand what we are talking about so as a teacher 
may we try to help our students to identify their words for that month. We will try, but we will not guarantee them because it has to come out from them. Them it has to come out from themselves. It has to come from within. We cannot uh, we cannot say that oh this is your. You cannot invite one student. For example, you cannot invite uh, uh, A B C student, X student, and say X student, your sadharma is this. You follow this. We cannot do that. We can only you know help them in identifying their own. Another aspect that we we will we will discuss is about human purpose. Uddesh kya hai? What is the uddesh of human being? For a human being, there could be four purposes. All of us know these things. One dharma, artha, kama, moksha. They are also called as purusharthas. Dharma we have discussed at length. Will not repeat that aspect. It is about good conduct, but very important line which can sum up our earlier discussion is this: the conduct of ours which causes no harm to any individual around us, which can beautify the life of others, and in the process can beautify our own life. Look at look at the beauty of dharma. It says by following this dharma. one you will not bring any harm to anybody the second one by following dharma you can beautify the life of others and in the process of making the life of others beautiful you can also beautify your own life this is this is in nutshell is called dharma religion is not at all a word that we should be using as a synonym to dharma yeah So this is what dharma means, and one 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 must follow this. Then we have artha. Artha is the wealth. It represents money, land, gold, stones, and other forms of wealth. Okay, anything. It's not always money. It can be land, gold, stones, anything that we require to make uh, you know our life comfortable. And uh, how do we earn the artha wealth? The ways and means to earn artha is in the dharma. what dharma says no harm to others beautify life of others thereby it also beautify your life so in order to earn the artha wealth we need to follow the dharma then the third but 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 there is a problem with the artha the, there is a problem with the wealth the problem is wealth has the inherent characteristic to command things command which means they can start controlling the other aspects of our life for example you have more money then what happens if you start more accumulating more and more money then it start commanding the other things for example you have lot of food you eat food like grains is also part of wealth if you say so then what happens it lead to intoxication then ultimately you lose dharma so which means if you accumulate more and more wealth then what is required for our right living then it leads to intoxication and ultimately we lose dharma so it it is very very you know risky we should earn dharma we should earn wealth by following the ways and means that are there in dharma but remember they have a quality they have inherent quality wealth wealth has inherent quality to command things so we need to be very clear how much to accumulate okay then dharma artha the third one is kama desires kama is not sex even most oftenly we, we really hesitate to use the word kama uh, it is not sex It, it is not necessary that kama is always sex. It is about desires. For example, we say shubha kama ne, shubha kama na ye. What do we mean by that? We best wishes we are saying, right? So desire, what kind of a desire? Desire for comfort and happiness. Remember, our Indian knowledge system, Bharatiya Gyan Parampara, has given enough scope for comfort and happiness. 
कभी कभी ऐसा होता है कि हमको एक इम्प्रेशन आ जाती है कि भारतीय ज्ञान परंपरा में सब वी हैव टू रिनाउंस एवरीथिंग सब त्याग कर दो और हिमालय जाओ और वहां पे तपस्या करो नो दैट इज नॉट दैट इज नॉट नो दैट इज नॉट एक्चुअली ट्रू रिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ दैट इज नॉट द एंटायर एस्पेक्ट ऑफ भारतीय ज्ञान परंपरा भारतीय ज्ञान परंपरा हैज अकोमोडेटेड एवरीथिंग ऑफ अवर लाइफ which can which can make our life happy and also others life happy so there is also space for karma there is also a space for comfort there is also space for happiness so what kind of a kamana or desire we will have friendship high quality of food beauty music dance and movies are all different aspects of desire yeah we we want we, we want high quality better food better you know, beauty music dance but there is also a problem as wealth had a problem because it has the power to command other things that's why we need to be very careful how much to accumulate then the, this karma also has a problem this is if you over indulge in any of these aspects that can lead to deviation from dharma when you deviate from dharma then there is a dukkha there is a stress there is a uh, there is a there is a sorrow so we need to guard ourselves about over indulgence for example eat you know always engage in watching movies and movies and movies then you will forget the dharma that you should follow as a student student dharma you 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 are more into you know uh, friendship and networking and all that as a teacher you do not find time to uh, you know take classes sometimes then you are deviating from the teacher dharma the, the dharma of dharma of a teacher or a faculty or a professor that we are following so we need to be very careful about it then enjoying comfort remember the last line which is also from the same book that i was uh, i was referring earlier this word is very important huh? it says this line is very important enjoying comfort is no sin and so is experiencing happiness but one cannot forget the dharma that's all you should not have feel that power that the, the guilt feel when you are enjoying but remember it should be in the framework of dharma okay i hope uh, uh, you are you are following what we discuss okay. then comes the last one moksha moksha salvation we of course uh, in present time we do not have any experiences of moksha but dharma artha and kama the earlier three they create a connection and bonding to the society we live in for example you follow dharma you make lot of money then you fulfill desires then again that bonding connection you follow dharma make lot of money then fulfill desires follow dharma make lot of money fulfill desires this is a sort of a you no know, cycle that you are in so this connection sometime over a period of time sometime it can make us to go through lot of uh, turmoil of experiences sometime you feel when for example at times you may not make desired level of artha desired level of income then there is a turmoil of experience sometime even you have a lot of money sometime you may not fulfill your desires it can create lot of depression that is why we need to think something beyond these three cycles dharma artha kama that is called as moksha so what does it mean let us not discuss about something which we really not relate but here is a different the beautiful line from the book again faith for life by dv gundappa dvg so he says so for humans i am reading as it is from here so for humans the thought of the supreme soul and consistent med- meditation on it provides a protective shield against the sufferings he undergoes so the thought of the thought of the supreme soul because there is something which is beyond following these three aspects there is something beyond it maybe supreme soul and meditating on it can provide a protective shield against all that sufferings that we may undergo we will definitely undergo 
uh, when practicing dharma, artha, and kama. So we require to think something beyond. Yeah. So if you if you if we know these uh, purusharthas, these purposes, any problem that our students come across in their professional or a personal life, I think they will handle it in a better way. Next. The another aspect that I have uh, selected is about Subhashita or Subhashitani. Subhashitas are a concise but very profound thoughts which are presented in couplets, some small verses you can say. Subhashitas. So they deal with topics. See, uh, my, see what, what are we doing now? We have discussed about few aspects of uh, dharma and few aspects of uh, purusharthas, few aspects of ashramas. They all help us in mentoring and uh, other thing, mentoring and life skill development, right? Similarly, there is uh, another body of knowledge which is present in Indian knowledge system, which are subhashitas. Very easy to follow. There are many websites or there are many books, uh, but, but choose authentic one. There, you find subhashita. Subhashita means Subha, su means good. Bhasha, bhasha means speech, a good word or wise words, you can say. So these subhashitas deal with topics of everyday scenario, covering a wide range of topics such as intellect, virtue, society, truth, time, and so on. So you can We can use subhashitas in the class or we can use subhashitas while mentoring or while guiding students. Let's, let's see some of the subhashitas that we have. Uh, I have selected one or two Subhashitas, but you can explore more after the class. Subhashita, one Subhashita, which we are now looking, uh, which we are seeing on the screen is this, which says, Amantram Aksharam Nasti Nasti Mula Manoshadham Ayogya Purusho Nasti Yoja Kastatra Durlabha, which means, Amantram Aksharam Nasti. We have Akshara. We have Varnamalas, Akshara, A, A, E, uh, then K, K, G. We have all these Aksharas, right? It says there is no, uh, you know, Amantram Aksharam Nasti, which means every Akshara is part of some mantra. Mantra, mantra means mantra you know. You take any mantra, there is an akshara, which means every akshara is useful to us. Similarly, nasti mula manoshadam. Nasti means uh, like there is no such aushada. Mula means mulika. Mulika means uh, you know jadi bhutiya, uh, jadi bhutiya like the Ayurveda herbs and other things. Any herb that you pick up, it has some aushada quality in it. It has some medicinal property in it. You cannot find any herb which does not have any medicinal property, which means all herbs will have some or the other medicinal property. In the same fashion, ayogya purusho nasti, which means there is no useless person in the world. Everybody is of some use. There is no useless person, but what is important, what is required is Yojakas Tatra Durlaba. So what do we do not find easily is Yojaka. Yojaka means the one who plans. You are HR manager, human resource manager. Because human resource, a, a good human resource manager, HR manager, will know whom to assign what task. Because everybody is of some use. Ayogya Purusho Nasti. So this is a very important thing for all HR managers. Why only HR managers? Any manager for that matter, we need to know that everybody is of some use. But, but we need to know where do, how do we plan uh, their actions? How do I plan my HR planning? HRP, human resource planning. Yeah, this is a beautiful, uh, you know, uh, Subhashita that we can, we can, we can use. Uh, yeah. So let's take one or two more. Okay, we'll take this. Shanashaha. Huh. Okay, I will read word by word so that we can make a better understanding. Kshanashaha, Kshanashashchaiva, Vidya Marthamcha Sadhayet, Kshanatyage Kuto Vidya, Kshanatyage 
ಅರ್ಥ wealth every penny every kana every grain every penny is important next line is also important it says kshana tyage if you just ignore one moment then there is no vidya if you if you ignore one grain one one penny then there is no dhana because for example you ignore start ignoring one penny then another penny then another penny so one you cannot accumulate you cannot earn uh well similarly if you start wasting one moment second moment one hour two hour four hours one week two weeks then it is difficult for us to uh, accomplish the vidya also it's also impo- very you know profound subhashita uh, that that we can uh, uh, use in our mentoring classes or in life skill classes because we usually use all those uh, best sellers best sellers i hope you all know what books i am talking about they're very abundant in the market uh, but but these are more uh, you know uh, effective there are few good books also among the best sellers there are few good books but let us also find uh, our own treasure that we have isn't it yeah this is a this is the last subhashita that uh, we would like to take it says kavya shastra vinodena i will i will i would like to use it one word by word ಕಾವ್ಯ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ವಿನೋದೇನ ಕಾಲೋ ಗತಿ ಧೀಮತ ವ್ಯಸನೇನ ತೋ ಮೂಢಾನ ನಿದ್ರೆಯ ಕಲಹೇನವ ವಿಚ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಕಾವ್ಯ ಪೋಯಟ್ರಿ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಸಮ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಸಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ವಿನೋದೇನ ಎಂಟರ್ಟೈನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಕಾಲೋ ಗತಿ ಧೀಮ 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 ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇಂಟೆಲಿಜೆಂಟ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಸ್ಪೆಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಕಾಲ ಸ್ಪೆಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಇನ್ ಪೋಯಟ್ರಿ in uh, shastra in learning some new knowledge and some entertainment but how these uh, mudha mudha means how these ignorant people spend their time they spend their time in vesana vesana means some sort of a bad habit and nidraya in sleeping kalaha kala means quarreling with each other quarreling with other they spend their time it's also very important when you tell these profound subhashitas there will be certainly some change some behavioral change for good among all of us yeah so these are subha there are many subhashitas that one can find and uh, you know uh, we can use in our classes so uh, we can refer refer it later i'm not uh, using it. so here is a story to end our session yeah this is also a story that i am taking uh, from faith for life by dr dv gundappa dvg sorry dv gundappa uh, this book is also available in english and the title of the book is faith for life uh, which was ta- which was translated into english by sm haricharan okay so the story goes like this it's important because we engage in lot of mentoring we should know something very very important in the end so let's uh, listen to this story this is this is almost end of my session after this story we'll end the class in the city long ago in the city of kalyanpur there lived a very wealthy person he had constructed a huge bungalow and in that bungalow he had also got a well dug in its premises ek kuwa bhi tha ek bada bungla tha unke paas a very wealthy person bahut bada bungla unhone banaya hai aur usme unhone ek you know well kuwa bhi tha pani ke liye but unfortunately there was no water they could find even after digging the ground up to 70 to 80 feet 70 to 80 feet uh, you know khodne ke baad bhi unko pani nahi mila bada bangla tha but well bhi unhone plan kiya tha but 
they could not find the water in the ground so he was very worried the wealthy person was very worried what should we do he was pondering kya karna hai pani bhi nahi hai because water is an important uh, part when he was actually worrying about this problem he happened to meet he happened to travel to chennai madras then uh, there he a situation arises where he meets a friend there that friend was searching for a bungalow in a village because he wanted to settle down in the village for a better life and better quality life he was fed up with the city life he wanted to move to a less crowded place and he was searching for a bungalow a nice accommodation he was a very you know very well known advocate uh, a lawyer and uh, he also was looking for a bungalow which had a well because of uh, his uh, uh, you know religious practices and all that he wanted a well in the house itself a bungalow with a well it was very you know uh, uh, what do you say it's like a, um, this man was searching what to do with this uh, bungalow uh, this wealthy man and the lawyer is searching the almost similar so this wealthy man decides to uh this wealthy man uh, informs the lawyer see i have a bungalow and there is also a well why don't you come and see so this advocate the lawyer says okay i will come next saturday to see your bungalow and the well so what this wealthy man does so before the arrival of the lawyer to see the bungalow there was no water in the well this this man this wealthy man he does something very in the wrong thing what he does he filled the water artificially to a substantial level there was no water because there was no water in the ground so but this man from outside artificially they, he has pumped in water in the well so on that saturday when the lawyer came the advocate came he saw the bungalow which is very nice he also saw the water water was also there and it was very sweet so he agreed and the agreement of sale happened property was also bought the registration happened everything went on smoothly and even the lawyer shifted from chennai to kalyanpur he started living but slowly that water in the well were drying up why because it was not a you know water of the well it was artificially pumped in the water was dry drying and one fine day the water completely evaporated there was no water so now this story tells something very important we may keep on mentoring guiding our students at length by using lot of techniques and everything we can do but if if they want to actually grow if they want to actually improve it has to come from within we can only spark that we can only spark we can only you know Uh, guide them but they should also have something within them this is very important so i just read what what the moral of the story here the moral of the story is something very very profound it says a human's life and country's prospect is also similar to this story that we have heard they cannot sustain which means human's life and country's growth or prospect they cannot sustain and grow from the support received by friends or the external borrowings from neighbors we went on borrowing from outside country for help and other things but that does not help us to grow and sustain that's why indian foreign policy have changed we have become more self reliant atmanirbhar bharat that's what this was written very long long ago but this this is exactly a concept of atmanirbhar bharat let's continue further energy needs to take birth and grow from within it has to come from within energy or else any magnitude of help received from outside will not help it can be like that artificially pumped in water it can be there for few days then it will again dry up like spring of water in the well energy and enthusiasm needs to constantly spring out and drive the individual and the country it has to come from the 
within everyone must we, we should be knowing this very you know we should be knowing this very clearly yeah okay. and in the last so this is also an important uh, you know um, line uh, i think we are running sh short of time uh, you may please read it and it's it's very important uh, you, you please read and understand this is all about life enthusiasm okay and uh, in summary what we have done so far i have tried uh, to to uh, it's an attempt to gain insights from indian knowledge system and which can help us in imparting mentoring and life skill development classes this session is also an attempt to make teaching in higher education especially in the management education as a more holistic one and also uh, it provide a powerful and a very resourceful alternative to the existing materials on mentoring and life skill development so more you you, you involve it can be upanishads you, it can be uh, puranas it can be bhagavad gita it can be ramayana it can be mahabharata it can be even subhashitas that we have seen or it can be any of the scholars who have written based upon our indian knowledge system they all sir they all provide a very powerful and resourceful alternative uh, to the existing material on uh, mentoring and life skill development so uh, these are the references uh, you can refer it later uh, i would like to acknowledge uh, uh, dr shatavdhan dr r ganesh uh, then uh, the help that i received from uh, the books uh, from uh, dv gundappa and uh, other authors so i acknowledge the, the all these uh, the sources and the personalities and uh, once again i would like to reiterate that if anything is good which i have discussed the credit should go to all the 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 creators of the knowledge all the rishis of our uh, bharatiya parampara if i have done some mistake it's just because of my misinterpretation and it is because of my ignorance because of my inability to understand the concepts in the right manner so so with this uh, i conclude uh, thank you so much uh, and uh, uh, let's let's all close the class thank you once again bye